And then he said, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. I can't catch a break, guys. Yeah. Get them the fuck away from me. I can't I can't be around those guys. People think, oh well, cleaning your room, that's just a cliche. It's like, yeah, really, eh? Just go ahead and try it. If people had any idea how powerful sleep is for healing from anything, and the fact that it's free. My mind is absolutely bulletproof, solid as a rock. Podcast. Hi guys, so uh, welcome everybody to another episode of the Fighting Fit Show. It's been a while, a few months really. Um, we're going to get stuck into today's episode. Today's episode is going to revolve around diet and nutrition. Um, specifically, we're going to be talking about precision nutrition, a course that both yourself and Chris um, have completed. Um, precision nutrition are one of the world leading educators in terms of uh, training uh, training personal trainers to really dial in the nutrition to deliver, deliver a better service to, to our clients. Mm -hmm. um, they really use a, a fantastic approach where they, they really look at the whole person. It's kind of, um, how, how would you guys describe it? Holistic. Holistic, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it really is a very holistic approach um, and a very, very effective, um, really, really good course. It took you guys how long to complete it? A couple of months, six months, more, six months a year, like it's pretty exact. Six months a year, yeah. yeah. as you can see, anyone watching the video, you can see the, the thick, thick books in front, front of the boys. So we're just going to basically go through a couple of uh, key topics in these books today. Mainly being started with what is the best diet? And I'll, I'll pass it over to you, Brian. So what is the best diet? Cool. Well, precision nutrition has been here. The secret is there isn't one. All, right? All the best coaches don't have um, a pigeonhole approach to diet, being the fact that people are so diverse. So for talk's sake, a great approach that you might see on... TV transformations is the broccoli and chicken diet and rice and very bland and it's great for results because you know it's very simple and I'm sure look you it's easy to measure it's easy to manage mm, this is it it's repeatable you can crack with it like it's just not very uh, tasty it's it's sim it's simple if you can get someone probably you know movie star money and just pay this, here commit to this diet no problem at all but if you're looking to maybe have a balanced approach to your life and you know you don't just care only about one aspect of yourself, which is, you know, building bigger biceps or leaning out or something, you know, you want to have to take in your likes, your dislikes, how this is going to affect you the long term, how it's going to affect your family, how it's going to affect your budget, and taking the whole picture into, into account. So, you know, keto might be great for you, you know, for a month, maybe you can't stick to it long term. So if you've got a, a, a diet that's, you've got a goal, it's probably going to take you six months to reach, maybe keto, keto isn't going to work for you, maybe a little more carbohydrates would help you sustain the diet, therefore, you know, a month on keto, you might lose half a stone. You know, a month on a higher carb diet, for whatever reason, you might only lose five pounds. But over the course of six months, your overall volume of weight loss is going to be greater, just to the nature of being able to sustain the diet. Yeah. So again, so the key with that, any diet, that you, any dietary approach that you choose, you really need to look at um, sustainability. And yeah. yeah. If you can't be consistent with that, again, I know so just kind of chicken and broccoli all day every day. I would probably get bored of it very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of different types of people. Some people love. Kind of the meal plan approach, yeah, eggs, breakfast, chicken, and broccoli, blah, 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 the rigidity of, of the meal plan. Whereas, uh, I'm not sure who said it, somebody, somebody says, um, what's the best diet or what diet should I follow? It's like, you already have a diet. It's just about, you know, you're, we all have foods that we already like. It's about mm -hmm. just mixing up the numbers of, like, you know, the, playing around with the portion sizes. It's like you can still literally eat, in theory, what you're eating. whatever you're eating right now and the foods that you like. In, For some. Just, or or some size, yeah, just I just, I just, I just, yeah, and reduce. Well, in most cases, yeah. the weight loss reduce the portion size. Then you know, you still have the ten, in theory, you can have the Domino's every Saturday, you know, if you wanted. But it's like you know, you're not going to be able to sit down and chomp away through a large pizza that's coming in, you know, three and a half, four thousand calories. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, so moving on, then. so Brent or Chris, you want to talk a little bit more about what is the best diet or what it, what is it not? Um, well, basically, like a, all the diets, all the main diets work on like your keto, your paleo. Your low carb, your high carb, your bodybuilder diet, all that crap. They already work. The main thing, like I said before, is sustainability. So you gotta find one that works for you. The one that you like. Like the thing that we tell our clients all the time is that you wanna find the foods that you like that help you hit your macros, that help you hit your nutrition targets. If you don't like it, you can put up with it for a period of time, but eventually that willpower is gonna win when you get stressed, when you get, um, when you lose sleep and all that jazz, which eventually happens in today's society. Uh, you start then you start craving all the quick energy foods and all that jazz as well. 
and then you start deviating from the plan. Mm -hmm. But if you like the foods that you're having already and they're hitting your targets, you don't need to deviate from the plan. It's habit. You're enjoying your food, so you don't feel this restriction. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the reasons why people end up in these binge cycles is because the food they have, they try and eat perfectly, and then have this restricted sort of mindset towards it. The pressure builds and builds and builds and builds, and then you end up just explode. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The weekend, like, woo, F this, yeah. F that. But it's something, something we see a lot is emotionally, maybe that's again a topic for maybe another podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, because again, because people forget, it's like, but it's quite normal to have a have an emotional connection to food. You know, we're happy, we're sad, we're sad, we're, it's something we've done for thousands and thousands of years. Yeah. You know, it's like, we just need to stop viewing it as, as, as a negative, negative well, thing. Well, there, there are a few like pros to using food to manage your feelings. Like, it works. Yeah. I mean, it works. It's just when it becomes an excess and you know other ways of managing your feelings. Yeah. You know, if, yeah. if food is the only way you manage your feelings, then we've got a problem. Yeah. But like, if you've just broken up with a boyfriend or something out there and you want to have a total ice cream and comfort eat, like, yeah. that's okay, okay to do sometimes. Then the main thing that I see is the guilt. When people have a yeah. binge, there's often, it's often associated with a lot of guilt. Yeah. And then when you feel guilty about it, you're just a negative cycle. Yeah. And then you're this person who's done bad and that's because you associate food with badness. Yeah. It's like there's no bad foods. That's what we'll say here in the best diet. It's like there's no good or bad foods. Again, it's just what's better or worse. It's a spectrum. But it changes from, from, from person to person and from situation to situation. Like for toxic, right, is kale a good food? Yes. Is it a good food if you're hosting a children's birthday party? No. no. Probably not. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's like for, for what you want to get out of that food, which is, you know, to entertain the kids as a treat, probably kale not the road to go for. So probably pizza would then enter in as a good food. Yeah. It's like, is pizza good food? And some pizza. So yeah, so most of it's like under that situation. Yeah, it's like, but... I'm, but just, I'm sorry, that, just sorry to interject, but that's one thing I come, I come up with a lot when I'm talking to people. The thing is like, I get text messages all the time. Is this healthy? Looking at these individual foods and it's like, is that pizza? It's like, let's start looking at our day or our week as a whole rather than mm -hmm. start looking at this. It's like, is pizza, is pizza good or bad? It's like, it, again, it depends. The, the answer to 99% of the questions depends, depends on the, on the, on the context. But it's like, what did you have for breakfast? What did you have for lunch? You know, and if you had a breakfast roll, you know, and then you had, say, uh, you know, uh, a KFC, and then you're having Domino's for dinner, probably not such a good idea, but you know, if you had eggs for breakfast, salad for lunch, and then you're having a bit of a pizza, pizza oh, for dinner. probably you work know, out there. Yeah, and you, and you worked out, and you're, you're probably still in and around your, you know, your calorie downs for the day based on your goal, you know, so it's, it's a little bit more complex, and is this food good or bad? Yeah, exactly. And yeah, the big thing as well is, I suppose, the question is, what is the best diet? Is I guess I'm trying to, I'm probably throwing a little bit of a curveball here, but it's like, is that the same question as what is the most optimal diet? I think maybe the science in that's still out. Like, so for talk's sake, you have all the vegetarians and vegans saying, you know, meat's bad. So, you know, it's really nutritious. It is, it is nutritious, but then you, you have to take in the holistic approach of, you know, well, environmental what, cause. Yeah, and it's exactly. So, how is the meat treated? Ethic, ethically as well. Because, right? like, I mentioned back to the, the yoga thing, like, most people are, are vegetarians, I was out chomping down the chicken. You know, there's a kind of this vegetarian diet. I'm not even that, but we kind of had this kind of this almost little debate where it was like, you know, who's a vegetarian? Do you eat meat? Why do you eat meat? And this kind of stuff. No, I just I felt this this guilt yeah. for me. But at the same time, in the back of my head, I really do feel like the most evolved way of eating is not to do it. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I think like, no, but we're I I genuinely believe that we're like we evolved to eat both plants and animals. We're yeah, all yeah, the yeah, like, yeah, like, We've canine teeth, we've incisors, we've all that jazz, we've long intestine. Like it's. Or designed to, to eat meat yeah, like, no, as and well. I, and I, I agree with that. You're, but, and again, I, I'm, I think for me, we, sorry, I think we have a shorter intestine. Oh, yeah. we have two. But, but, <laughs> but I think we think we were, yeah, but I think we have a shorter intestine than maybe a gorilla. So if you, mm -hmm. I think a gorilla has a drastically long um, intestine, intestine system. Well, it's far more, more plants. Yeah, because it just takes so long to break down all the cellulose and they literally have to sit there eating and breaking down all the, whereas, you know, we cook food, we break it down, we make it simple, and digest. Sorry, stuff. when I said long, I meant large. Sorry, I, I think we do. I think we definitely do a large one, but maybe not in comparison to some plant eaters. Yeah. Way, so in that sense, having that shorter thing would be another argument for. Yeah. Well, the, the, well, the point I'm trying to make is like ethically, I feel like humans in the most evolved form. It's like we don't necessarily have to eat meat anymore. So it's like. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Why should we put it on the I'm still going to fucking eat meat, eat meat for dinner. Like, you but, know, but, 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 but why? But in the back of my mind, for that's toxic, kind of for toxic, that's so, so there is, there is like the, the, the question of bioavailability. I mean, you just change this to vegan, vegan. Yeah, no, I think, I think no, we, no, we, no, we should, we should do so a one point after this. Yeah, no, because it, it's basically, it's kind of like bioavailability versus 
plants versus animals. And sorry, just back to what I originally said, is like, what's the optimal diet? You know what's So it's an optimal diet does not necessarily mean that the optimal diet is the best diet for you because you might have so far to come between yourself now where you are and the ability to execute it, the optimal diet that even the optimal diet might not be right for you, even though it would take you towards optimal health mm. for talk's sake, a full profile of amino acids, uh, uh, all your essential fatty acids, you're getting your calories that in relationship to whatever training you're doing, you have a full profile of vitamins and minerals, you're, you're, like you're doing all the things for optimal health. So there is that thing to take into consideration. And you know, if you've got a very restrictive diet that's helping you hit your goal of body fat loss, well, the body fat loss one might be right for you right now, but maybe moving towards something that's got full hydration, full profile of vitamins and minerals, amino acids and fatty acids, there probably is an answer for that. And you probably could get it from uh, plant sources only, and you could probably do it on, you know, Maybe maybe a carnivore diet. I'm not sure if that's possible to get um, vit- all the vitamins and minerals. But if you if you eat off meaning the organ meats, yeah, okay, there's yeah. a huge amount of. So, so, so I, I, I imagine there's a there's a there's a way to kind of get it both ways. But the big thing is you want to make sure you've all your vitamins and minerals. You want to make sure you're hydrated. You want to make sure that you've got all your fatty acids, and you want to make sure that you're you're not going to be malnourished at the end of your your diet. That's the big thing. And for talk's sake, being a little bit restrictive to lose body fat could be better for you in the short term and deal with a few deficiencies in the meantime, because the overall arching thing is, look, I'm gonna have a heart attack, what does it matter if I don't have vitamins and minerals and I'm dead? Yeah. So reducing your body fat in, in the short term could be best, but there is an option. Because it will, it will build momentum into you living a more healthy lifestyle long exactly. term. Once you can get rid of the weight that's making you feel terrible and you know, you're stuck in this emotional eating cycle and you just can't seem to so go. So I, I would say that the optimal diet is one, again, that's gonna give all your fatty acids, all your vitamins and minerals, uh, give yourself a positive protein turnover, um, calories that don't leave you feeling tired, fatigued, based on your current energy expenditure, and that you're fully hydrated, and that you're drinking good, clean water. That would be, would be optimal for me, but then it's like anything on the road to that, from where you are to that, however you want to splice it up, is going to be the best diet for you, something that you can manage and achieve at your current level of so, nutrition. So the best diet is the diet that helps you reach your specific goal, yeah. you know, whatever that is to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, anything else to add to that, Chris? Amen. Or have you had a question in relation to the, All of the, to the vegan as well? Oh, well, it's 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 like too deep in because yeah, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's a very contentious issue. Yeah, it's a very contentious issue. There's one thing, it's like when you, if you are going to make like, let's say, your tofu thing, I heard this in Joe Rogan once, which is like, if you're going to have your tofu, tofu whatsoever. Oh, well, let's say you're going to have your tofu salad or whatever. Like, let's say to have all that stuff being grown, you have to clear out a whole mm. field. Yeah, yeah. And when you clear out that field, you have to kill everything other than the tofu and make sure it doesn't get in. So like every shrew, every turtle, so every environmental display. Yeah, exactly. Mm. You just got to take, you got to take every ounce out of that and only have tofu there. And it's like, I'm sure that you kill an awful lot of animals doing that yeah. there too as well. It's like, there's no, I don't think there is a way of getting around it where you can be in fully nutritionally optimized. It's like, and stuff doesn't die. It's like yeah. life eats life and that is a part of life, which is unfortunate and uh, I'm not happy about it, but it's like mm. you, you gotta play the game. Yeah, that's true. And again, for me, it's like it comes out in that whole thing. It's like we're just a little bit too far removed from it. Yeah. I feel that's the one of the key, the key yeah. problems. It's like let's go. Well, if you're if you're gonna make a decision myself and and I haven't done it, so you know I'm preaching from a pedestal here, but you know, even though I, I, I'm unjustifiably maybe, but it's like if you're gonna eat a pig, it's like you should be willing to go and kill a pig. Mm. If you're gonna eat a cow, you should be willing to go kill a cow, kill a cow. Yeah, you get know what I'm saying? Because like, what do we see these these things? Like see these videos of these cows and just run around fields like puppies. Yeah, so, that's, so, that's where so, it makes so, so here, here's the other side of it. And then it's obviously then it's like have a tree in the, in the yeah, yeah. arms and, my, my, and, and my, that actually affects the nutritional my, quality of the food as well, like on the quality of life of the animal. Yeah, because like, if you fed grains all day, like the, in America, like the quality of beef in America is not no, not not compared to grass fed beef. Yeah, yeah. Ireland, Ireland's actually we're we're very, we're very lucky, and that's one of the kind of the biases that happen takes place in the media is between um, all these studies that say, like for example, McDonald's is a great example. It's like the quality of, of meat you get in McDonald's in America. Versus yes. the quality of meat because it's mixed with ammonia and all this terrible stuff. It's, like, it's that kind of pink slime stuff. Mm. Whereas in Ireland, it's actually 100% beef because mm. we're lucky that the EU we've got much better regulations. But there is kind of I think it's true true TTIP trade agreement. They're trying to to dilute the the quality of the food in Ireland to be more so we can have more open trade with America in terms of food, mm. which will reduce the quality of food in Europe. Which is saying if you're if you get your nutrition from McDonald's, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't rely on McDonald's yeah, yeah, nutrition. Yeah, but it's just, just as an as as part of this example. example. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, but just my thing on that, back to the animal uh, killing thing on that, is like when I was fasting, 
as I said, I was, I'm a very picky eater. So when I was fasting and I was eating, um, you know, my, my very selected diet before, when I actually started to become generally hungry, that old saying, if you're not, if you're not going to eat an apple, you're not hungry, you're just bored. So it's kind of like, for me, it's like, if you, gen- I, and I just, say that again. so if, if you won't eat an apple, you're not hungry, you're just bored. Yeah, I think that's, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's I, like I generally, such was, a great question, ask yourself. And the difference between hunger pangs and actual hunger is a different thing as well. Because, Completely different. Yeah. And cravings. Exactly. Yeah. So, the, so the thing is like, if you have a pain in your stomach, it doesn't necessarily mean you're hungry, that just means ghrelin has spiked or whatever hormones are, are involved in the whole process and they say, oh, you should probably eat now and only eat around this yeah, time. Right, but that's literally based off, off routine. Yeah, it's like exactly. if, you, if you always eat at nine o'clock and you miss a meal, it's like your hormones will elevate a ghrelin, particularly yeah. in the hunger hormone, will elevate Around about that's actually, that's more really cool it will elevate again around lunchtime. It yeah. will elevate again. It doesn't mean you're actually starving. Yeah. And people forget. And again, you know, I, de- I don't recommend kind of any sort of extreme fasting for for people getting in the in the kind of health and fitness or trying to control their diet. Um, as a start off point, because I just mm-hmm. think it can just develop. Yeah, fasting is that. a great approach to diet because yeah. depending on where you are. Yeah, exactly. Because so people forget body fat is food. It's like not necessarily unhealthy. Um, or just something to be very, very careful with. Yeah, so oh. it, it could train a bad mindset. Sorry, just let me finish finish this thought and go with it. Um, was basically so when I was when I started fasting, I was genuinely hungry. Um, I was walking out of the aisles as somebody who never would eat vegetables and onions were disgusting. I was literally going, oh, red onion and lettuce would be lovely. And my big thing just on that is like the state that you go into is a different state. And I wonder if you exaggerate that state again, instead of being comfy, empathetic on the couch. Would you kill an animal? Yeah. I, I imagine most people would. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so, would. so it's kind of like you're looking at this, look, look, as a higher perspective kind of thing. It's like we are causing your question, we wouldn't kill an animal. I only think that that's because there's not the necessity to do it. I really do believe that, as I said, under the right circumstances, most people would, you, you, you develop that, that lizard brain where you wouldn't look at the friendly personality of the cow and you look and see it as a, as a means to survival if that was the case. Yeah, there's, there's a great example of that on Bear Grylls. They got the show the survival and it's like these I don't know how that must be set up or no, I don't know but then these two little piglets <laughs> wander in the camp and all of a sudden the girls all over them they're treating them as little pets and they're keeping them as pets for a couple of days and then all of a sudden everybody starts to get hungry and you know and half the camp is split then half they want to eat them half them want to keep them as pets but I wonder like if you play that out how long would would it take before the girls did, did not, changed their did mind did not play it out uh, no I don't think so I don't I think I know actually as far as I remember I think, up, I think they ended up killing one, one. And I think I think I do think that they end up coming. So them. sad. And I'm saying as a media. Like yeah. that's, I'm saying, this is this is because at that that point after that point where again where you you give them names, you kind of you create that connection. With but them. The, but, but it's just for us. It's like it's easy when they're over there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The form's over there. It's like I don't see it. You know, when it comes in this nice little pack, and we're sort of attached from the process. I just think it's you're not conscious. Of it. Yeah, there's there's a slight like ethical issue there that you know it needs to be addressed. And um, what I was going to say there as well, just on hunger, on the difference between hunger, hunger cravings, and hunger pangs. It's like the hunger pangs do come when, um, you know, it is your grounds elevated. So if you do try and experiment with fasting, you'll see exactly how that plays out. You want to know that ground like hunger pangs only last for about fifteen minutes. A good way to quell it is have some sparkling water or coffee or just regular water. Yeah. Um, to kind of manipulate the, the stretch receptors in the, in the stomach. Exactly, exactly. So um, did you, if you do fast, you'll notice the difference between a uh, craving um, for, let's say, carbohydrates or sugar or sweets, you'll know what true hunger is, or mm. you know what ghrelin is, the hunger pangs are, and then eventually you'll understand what true hunger is as well. Yeah. So I've done a good bit of experiment with fasting. Um, yeah, I'm fasting right now. Yeah. Well, not, what's the longest, uh, you, you, longest you've been is three days? It's four. You've done four, I've done three days. And 48 hours. You've done 48 hours. It's like, but it's like changing. Like, I wasn't hungry. Yeah, you know, I didn't eat because I was starving. I ate because I, I missed, I missed food. I missed, food. Like, I missed the sensation of eating. Broader, yeah. and it's like hunger goes away, yeah, which, is, exactly, which is which is exactly crazy. the opposite. Like, so I don't know what the turn is in the podcast on on fast and but it was interesting. It's just it's very interesting. Just the the, the common dialogue around these things. Yeah. Like, starving or something. And it's like, but when you actually start to look at, at the research, it's it's a very I, interesting. Might eat for water. Yeah, fast. Why? Why is that? You know, probably because I wasn't eating food. There wasn't much saliva in my mouth. There wasn't breaking down anything. There wasn't yeah. that, that disgusting stuff because I wasn't eating. Got a break. Imagine that's important. And imagine if my teeth got wider. Your mouth is literally the orifice into the guide to within. Imagine. I'm sure other things would clear up as well. Mm. You know, like your intestines, your stomach. I imagine just like you know a bin. It's like if you keep throw, throwing stuff in there, you know, some things are gonna stick, some things are gonna stay, and there's this constant turnover stuff. I imagine you know, it's pretty messy in there. I'm just giving the body time to clean and. Yeah. yeah, I have this kind of abstract theory. Um, it's all bro science, guys. Yeah, it's 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 it
um, opinion. Um, this theory was like putting miles on the clock in terms of your digestive system. It's like how much food, because one of, one of the key things, one of the things that the science is clear about is uh, calorie restriction will make you live longer. Mm. 100%. It's like that's that's 100% sure. repeatable. When you reduce, when you reduce calories, you live live longer. people live longer. But I, I, I think it's like, I think it's like something as crazy as like, you know, reduce calories 20%, people live 20% longer. I think it's like that linear. Well, the one. Yeah, I, 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 I think it could be. Um, but it's like we got this, we can only put a certain amount of miles in the clock. You know what I mean? Mm. So we got some people that are just like chomp, say like if we're talking in terms of volume, say 100 kilos worth of food through their system. Some people are doing that in 20 years, whereas other people are doing that over 60. Mm -hmm. And because that's on the inside, it's like you can't see the wear and tear that that takes place, particularly if it's low quality food. So I think that's something, something to be kind of... So well, that just kind of segues into the next part that we're going to look at. So what is good nutrition? So what is good nutrition? So good nutrition should do a couple of things. Um, I'll kind of run over a couple of these points first and then we'll, we'll go back over and we'll run to each point in a, little, in a little bit more detail. So what is good nutrition? So good nutrition should help you control your energy balance. It should give you nutrients. It should help you look, feel and perform your best. It should be outcome based, meaning when you ask the question, how is that working for you? It should be, it's working pretty good. So if it's not working good for you, you probably need to make a change. Um, it should be sustainable for both us and the planet. Um, it should help you remove limiting factors, which we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, a little bit more detail. Um, it should address the mindset around food, particularly in the, in the area of emotional eating, and it should also um, address the environment around food. So I think that's something that is is very common as well, is like people have people, places, or things that result in something like binging, or like when habits. you're... Or ha habits. Triggers. Yeah, triggers. When you're around certain people, when you're in certain places, these are the are the times that you tend to, you know, overeat. Overeat. Like sitting down, down grazing yeah. in the evening, yeah. sitting down and watch TV. Yeah. It's like the t TV's the trigger. It's like yeah. sitting down the TV. It's, well, I'd say it's like a combination of like Saturday and TV, and evening. Saturday evening TV. It's like, boom, that's a trigger. This gets... It's like, and you need to do that as well for some reason. People need... It's like, oh, no, I have to sit down because, and watch because, TV. Because we, we really underestimate how deep ingrained these unconscious habits are. Mm -hmm. It's like extremely, like... Extremely the, big, the big thing with this kind of stuff with just change in general is identity. So you identify as somebody who chills out the Saturday night yeah, on TV. Yeah. That's like, yeah. and again, because again, I'm walking and strong too. Like you know, this whole Saturday night takeaway thing. You, yeah, you understand yeah. like Domino's and something. Really, really good at that. And but it's kind of like, and why do they do that? Because they give you an identity. Mm. You know, because what they do is they go, oh, you know, the pe like literally the advertisement of a of a of a middle aged, younger than middle aged, a young fella and his girlfriend. You know, anywhere between twenty and thirty five years of age who on average would be Domino's customer and all this kind of stuff, and they basically have them on the advertisement and make you there. They go, that's me, I'm on that yeah. telly, I relate to that story, therefore this is an activity that I could pursue yeah. and that would be normal and I wouldn't be rejected by the social group for it. This yeah. is, this They've is... Integra integrated themselves into kind of our, our weekly routine, or even I feel like on a, on a larger scale, the best example of is Coca-Cola and Christmas. <laughs> They've literally made themselves... Yeah, a part of Christmas. I I generally think that it's like part of like something people look forward to. Like people look forward to when the cook truck feel like Christmas until you fucking see the cook guy. But I think Santa in before pre Coke used to be green. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no more. That's good, right? So we're back into what is good nutrition. So you start off, what's the best diet? There is none. And again, it depends, depends on the context, what, what, what your goals, what you want to achieve, what you want to do. And, but just kind of as a couple of kind of overarching principles, you know, when you're looking at your diet, a couple of things you, sh you should probably want to be able to, to tick the box. So number one key is especially for people who want to lose weight or body fat, build muscle, controlling energy balance. Yeah, so energy balance is a massive factor. Anybody want to take that one on? I always say to any clients that I have, if you think you can't lose weight, and for those who's listening, I'm using inverted commas here. If you think you can't lose weight, come to me. We'll put you on a treadmill. We'll plug you into the ESP board, and we'll run the country off your unbelievable infinite amount of energy. Yeah. That's basically what it is. Like, if you think you can have an output forever and not get some kind of diminished effect on your body, i.e., you know, less muscle, less body fat. It's like you don't understand. How the universe works. Yeah, it's, yeah. Always a big, it's a lot of terminology. It's, it's very simple. And look, I don't, again, I, and again, I don't. It's a little no, but it's a little. I, I, think, I think it's a little bit to say that it's an oversimplification of problems. Essentially, because one of my favorite quotes is, "Not what you eat, it's what you absorb from what you eat." Yeah, yeah. you get what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, so, the, so the main thing with that so, is that energy, or when you eat food, it's not a closed system. Exactly. It's not. It's not 100 percent efficient. Like, exactly. You you lose energy like through heat. So so for talk's sake, here here's what we do. We understand that 100 grams of carbohydrates is. 100 is 400 calories. 
All right, so we take that and we go, okay, so white bread is 400 calories and brown bread is 400 calories. And you have to understand that, you know, maybe, I don't know what the percent is, but 20, 30, 40, 50% of the brown bread is going to be fiber. That's not the gesso, that amount of energy is not available to you as if it was sugar, because it's not sugar. Yeah. So that's where we have to understand the makeup of the food and how that relates to, you know, good fats. It's kind of like, you know, if there's vitamins and minerals that literally weigh up at a... At a, at a microgram level to make up grams, but then when you factor those in, they're going to be absorbed and go to a different pathway that's not fat loss or not fat storage. It's going to be a different thing. You know what I'm saying? So if, you know, if we're talking about 100 grams of fat, 10 grams are um, enter vitamin here, you know, vitamin K. vitamin K or whatever like that. You know, it's that makeup of the food is not immediate energy. And so some, some level it depends on what's the state of the body at that time. If you're, if you're completely glycogen depleted, and you eat two big baguettes. You know your muscle, your muscle, your muscle stores will suck up that glycogen. Whereas if your glycogen stores are, are completely oh. full, it's like your body can't store the glycogen because your liver glycogen and your muscle glycogen is full. So it has to convert into. Do you understand? If you are a six foot six American football player and you're a five foot one housewife, two baguettes are going to be two completely different exactly. foods. You know, so, yeah. it's like, so it's like saying five hundred calories, five hundred calories to you is not like saying five hundred. Like five hundred calories to you is. A, quarter, a third of your day's intake, 500 calories to use a snack. Yeah. And another, another point I, I kind of feel see with our clients all the time as well is like inconsistency with just general daily activity. You know, one of the key principles of our program doesn't even involve the gym. It's just like, you know, being living an active lifestyle through using your, your Fitbit or something similar. Just having a metric is one thing you know, to say is know your numbers because numbers don't lie, people do. Because whether we lie to ourselves, you know, we yeah. tell ourselves we're doing, we're doing all this stuff, but it's, it's just not the reality. When you track the numbers, you know, it kind of, it sh- puts it right there in front of your face, and there's no. And there's and no a lot of people don't like to look at the numbers. 100. That's the because people, look, people, they ignorance is bliss. They know, and that's the big thing for me. The biggest illusion that I had when I first started this career was that I generally took people at face value, and here's why I took them at face value because they believe their own lies. Yeah. So when they come to me and they seem genuine, they're all bit genuine. But if they look deeper, or maybe you know, took an objective look. Yeah. Which, is, which is our job to do, is to go, okay, well, let's be objective here and understand that maybe you're underestimating some things mm-hmm. and maybe you're overestimating other things, yeah. that even though the numbers in your head are matching on the scales or, you know, on my fitness pad, they're not necessarily actually what you think they are. Or, and again, this, this is the point I was going to touch on, it's like, if you have 2,000 calories every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so you have 2,000 calories every single day. When I say that week one, you know, you're 10,000 steps a day, you work it every day. There's a big difference in terms of the calorie deficit. Well, I, I prefer to use energy deficit or calorie, calorie deficit um, because I just, I don't know, I just prefer. <laughs> yeah, Dog man. Yeah. yeah. But, but, um, but that's but no, you, but, don't, you don't need calories, calories. But, but it's more so, yeah. I feel, because I don't feel a calorie, a calorie, a calorie. It's, it's, it's a little more complicated. But it's, sorry, just like, it still works. It still works. It's, 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 not a, it's not a perfect system, but it's exactly. the best system yeah. you have. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm not saying, we're not going to, we're not going to, we're not going to, we're not going to disrespect the entire perfect. system because it's not perfect. Because again, your study show that, you know, if I use my fitness plan, I scan, scan a pack of food, you know, it can be, usually there's 20% more calories in there because the markers want us to think it's 99 calories and really it's it's 120 calories yeah. or whatever. Um, but the difference between them two weeks, so say you're eating 2,000 calories Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you've done your 10 and sessions and your workouts, the energy deficit is is much greater in those second week if you only hit 5,000 steps, 6,000 steps. You miss a workout. You get what I'm saying? We're, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of calories here. Like the difference between a 5,000 step day and a 10,000 step day is about 1,000 calories. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So it's like it's a completely different energy equation or a completely different energy balance so people need to be really looking at themselves in terms of their activity levels and making sure that if, if your activity is greatly reduced you need to look at your calories and also reduce that if weight loss is your goal mm-hmm. because that can because again it's it's a, it's a multifaceted thing it's not as it's not as black and white as like energy and energy I've eaten 2,000 calories every day it's like oh yeah but, but I hold my ankle and I have my over off my walks it's like well, that's a pretty big deal because we should probably reduce calories 10, 20% exactly but one of the cool things there so, if, someone, if, so, if that does happen to someone you know I mean? And they are eating 2,000 calories a day and they have the structure and they have ordered eating. It's really easy to just go take this out, take this out, and now you have your calorie deficit again. Yeah. I think it's really important to understand that like, having order to your eating is massive. Yeah, so sorry, I, some, some amazing clients like that, for example, like if Deborah's coming in tomorrow next day, she's injured right now, so she's coming in to have her calories readjusted due mm-hmm. to, to compensate for the for the lack of activity. And sorry, just really quick, um, ordered eating, what's the opposite? Disordered eating. So not eating disorder, but this like. Disordered. Sorry, uh, sorry, just really uh, PN Nutrition basically said that people don't have an eating disorder, they have disordered eating. 
which is going well, no, the, there, there's a difference between those oh, sorry, two. Okay. Sorry, and it is important to, to understand the difference. Like uh, having an eating disorder, like technically we are not qualified to uh, deal with that sort of stuff. It's it's yeah. 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 Exactly, exactly. But with disordered eating, just when you don't have structure to it, it means like you're just going based on how you feel. Like so, um, a lot of people try to That's the point this towards. Yeah, but to try and say that, that that they're eating intuitively and how their body feels. And some people can do that, and some people can't because of their hormonal profile, because of their habits, because of grounding and all that jazz. They just eat whatever's around. So if you if you eat based on how you feel, and let's say your sleep is bad, and then the next day you're going to feel bad, you need that quick energy, I need that energy. You have your coffee, dehydrate you, same as your adrenal glands and all that jazz, and then you get your sugar, spikes the insulin, and then all of a sudden you're in this spike low, spike low, trying to balance your energy out all day. Mm -hmm. And then, then that just leads to overconsumption. Yeah. Right? For, over for me, that's the biggest problem with people. Is like everyone. It's like I do a lot of time myself. It's like nobody's perfect, but it's like when it's, but it's about having the being able to look and look and see what the problem actually is, rather than mm -hmm. kind of blaming him or her or whatever, whatever situation. Um, going out into the world without a plan. Yeah. You know, if you're if you are not going out into the world without a plan in relation to your food, knowing what you're going to have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Roughly, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have an idea of the calories you have at breakfast, calories you have at lunch, calories you have at dinner. If you're having three meals, like you can do this whatever way you want. But if you don't have that order in your life, you will always be a slave to your emotions because you all your your emotions will always dictate what you eat. Yeah, and it's it's very. And if you and again, if your type of person doesn't have control over your emotions, or you know, doesn't have has maybe a, a, an erotic mindset yeah, yeah. or something like that, and you're kind of you're more pro to negative emotion. It's like, you know, that can be a very, very difficult be, path. Be humble to the amount of control that you have over yourself. Because a lot of people overestimate. It's like they overestimate their own willpower and then they backwards rationalize after they make the mistake. There's a, there's a, there's a really cool thought experiment you can do right now. All right, do you want to lose weight? Yes. Yeah, have you wanted to lose weight in the past? Yes. Did you make that decision to tell yourself you're going to stick to a very strict diet? Yes. yes. Why didn't you do it? Because the, the, the diets don't work for me. It's not that the diets don't work for you, you know, but it's, it would be in that case. It's not that the diet doesn't work for you because you pick the diet and if you would not analyze the diet, your, your actions truly, it probably was more of a case where by ev like, even though you said you were going to do one thing, your ability to stick to what you said you were going to do wasn't exactly what you thought because you, 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 you swayed from mm. emotion to emotion. And it's kind of like we are not our own tyrant. We can't just boss our... Jordan Peterson. Yeah. We, we're not our own tyrant. We can't just boss ourselves around and tell ourselves what to do because we are actually not fully in control. Yeah. That's what I said. We're, we're terrible boss to yeah. ourselves because we never do what, we, what we're supposed we're to do. We're terrible clients. Yeah. 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 Well, like, you know, it's like we really need to enforce good habits. So that, um, there's a really cool book if anybody wants to listen to it. It's called Atomic Habits and it basically kind of helps you set up the environment in a way that failing is almost impossible. Because yeah. the biggest thing is like you are always going to wake up with one whim or another and it's no, you're not in the mood of what you were in yesterday so motivation well a little bit but if you can prime the environment to set you set your habits up that they're almost going to be automatic that it's easier to win than it is to lose and that takes a little bit of, of as i said pre-thought you're not yeah. just it's a plan so you set yourself up with a plan you set certain cues up um, and you basically prime your environment up that getting wins easier than getting to lose yeah for one of my favorite things just in slight relation to that is burn your bridges it's like if you're genuinely serious about losing weight and you're done with eating shit, it's like get a black bag right now, go into the kitchen, empty out the presses and all the shite, go to the freezer, ice cream, all the shit, all the frozen pizzas, all, dump it now. It's like if you're genuinely serious and you want to make a big change, burn the bridges. The burn of the bridges uh, story comes from, you know, this, um, these guys, I can't remember, some general, they, they were trying to take a castle, they came there in the boats and they were outnumbered, it was going to be a really difficult battle. Oh, the general that he ordered burn the boats, we're not going back. Yeah. It's like we're not there's no way back. It's like we win or we fucking die. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So it's like have that that's level that's, have that level of commitment. You know what I mean? So it's like take massive action. It's like if you're serious about it, start telling your people about it. Stop giving yourself the room for failure. Stop. That is crazy. You get what I'm saying? Stop stop kinda of like, you know, kinda of one foot in, one foot out. You know, if you're serious about your 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 diet only loss program, it's like start telling all your friends. Burn the boats. Burn the boats. That's stop yeah. so stop good. burning the boats. You know, you stop giving yourself that give, way back. Stop yourself giving yourself that average. Give yourself so what what if I call it so create as many social contracts as possible. Yeah. Even for you when you get your fast. You told me and you yeah, told yeah, you. Yeah, that's what I do straight I, away. That's, that's what I think. Because, because that one thing for me, it's like I might, it's like I know myself enough. I've, I've come to the point where I understand myself enough where I'm not going to just purely rely on myself to follow through because I know I'm human. Exactly. I make mistakes. 
my, sometimes my emotions get, get involved too. It's like, you, you know, really know I, the right I, answer. Exactly, I have mastery over them, but I, but I understand myself. It's like, I'm going I'm to bring you in, I'm going to bring you in. You know, we have a mastermind group, you know, we're going to do our workouts, blah, blah. So if you don't work out, we're testing, you're like, what are you doing? You're why are you being such a lazy fucker. I, I had a gal come in to me today and she literally said, like, I don't know why I'm here in terms of setting goals because I know exactly what I want. But I think I come in just so you say, oh, I'm here, I'm ready to make a change again. Yeah. So it's like just showing up and just yeah. saying, oh, by the way, I actually want to make a change. Yeah. It, it, it's so powerful because we're, we're, well, words are powerful. Symbol, the actions are powerful. Like they create energy. They give, yeah. they, they give it something. Like it, it gets the ball rolling. It creates momentum. But also we're very social creatures. You know, it's like the, the, the rejection from the group is very, very Huge. powerful. So it's like if I do something and I go, oh, by the way, I'm doing something. And then for me to turn around and then not do it, like if I might feel like the group's going to look. He doesn't follow through what he's saying, and that mm-hmm. therefore lowered my ranking in the group. And set yourself for that possibility of a loss will encourage you to not not yeah. do the action that you said you weren't going to do. One hundred percent. That's why kind of one thing that I love about all all kind of community is like you know we keep each other accountable. You know mm-hmm. the daily food trades and all this kind of stuff. Or like you know especially tricky Gary and stuff really using a while. Like you know post those runs every day in the group because now if he doesn't post in the group, it'll be like. Oh, Gary, you're going to run. Jacob run yesterday. You get what I'm saying? It's like that question is enough. Is it? Is a badass. You know, but that question is enough. You get what I'm saying? It's like. Did you go for a run? It's like, oh fuck, I didn't go for a run yesterday. Why didn't you go for one? And then, but it, you're, you're <laughs> no one wants to say because I'm lazy. Piece yeah, because I was lazy. You know what I mean? It's like I was tired. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? It's like I'll just make sure you go tomorrow. You know, so yeah. the, these social contracts are way more powerful than, than people give them credit for. So if you're really serious about it, tell your friends, tell your family, tell the people that you respect. Yeah, mm-hmm. and but, but here, here's another tip point on that. That's why I like Joe Jay here, here joke about like, oh, if um, you're someone's vegan and CrossFit. And those CrossFit, what should I tell you about first? You know, it's like, but the reason they're saying it is like, because it's really like on a diet or on a fast or something like that there, like it's really easy if someone doesn't know, you know, it's like, oh, these guys don't know, I can let it slide here. Yeah. You know what I, mean? but I, don't, I don't even think it's just that. I think no, it's, it's, not. Also, it's also the fact that they're part of a tribe. Yeah. You know, it's like, and they, people love part people, of their identity. Yeah, people love to say, it's like, oh, by the way, it's like, and it's, it's look, I think without getting too much into it, but it's like people don't have that much comfort anymore. You know, so, so to be part of a tribe makes you significant. Mm. You know, so to be a vegan and to make the hard choices that it takes to be a vegan, there's also a little bit of virtue in what they believe that mm. they're doing. So it's like for them, can I give them props? Yeah, I've, I've, uh, none but respect. No, for no, 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 no. Do you know who I respect for? Vegans who do it properly. Like, see yeah, the, 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 the pizza chips vegans. No, <laughs> <laughs> but see, but see a vegan that I see with a with, with like who literally hitting their protein targets out of lentils, lentils, beans, and peas. Yeah. I'm like, you are a savage. Yeah, you are a savage. Yeah. Who you call him? A uh, Rob from the strength and conditioning course. Mm. He had calves as big as my bicep. He's a vegan. He's yeah, a that was crazy. He's he's he he follows this guy down in core. I think he trains with him and he's vegan as well. Like he's like squatting like 220 kilos and stuff like that. Like, so crazy, like, crazy, crazy, as I said, the optimal diet like is perfect, perfect form. You, know, like perfect you, you form. need to be able to understand what it is you need and where you're lacking and, and the, the pitfalls a certain diet might predispose you to. So for talks like, you know, uh, uh, Atkins diet, very fat, very high in fats. That's by nature, moderate, moderate protein, high in fats. It's like, so that predisposes you to eat unhealthy fats. That's yeah. something you're going to need to watch out for. Yeah. You know? So you can't just say, oh, Imagine well. Imagine that all trans I'm acting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm acting. Uh, <laughs> killing yourself is what you do. Yeah, you know? It's yeah, like, yeah. at the detriment of, of, of your entire picture of health, you're, you're, too, you're too solely focused on one thing. Yeah, because again, because coming back to these points that we're going to bring them now is, you know, first of all, <laughs> control the energy balance. You're always going to seem to lean towards mindset because I think it's it's literally the number one thing that holds people back is mm. a poor mindset or more, more so a lack of, Lack of understanding of themselves. Mm. You get what I'm saying? It's just like because we, we, we believe these false stories. We, like there's so many people out there that genuinely believe diet diets don't work for me. You know, yeah. like, and, they're, and, full, and they fully believe that, and that's the problem. It's not the diets that belief is the real issue, and not that the person's the problem. Because yeah. the person can the change belief. their mindset. Exactly. That's if we have a grow mind, it's like, or do you have a grow mindset, or do you have a fixed mindset? Yeah. Are you open to open to yeah. changing yeah. your beliefs, or are you are you close? Here's, to here's, the, here's, the, here's the problem. The growth mindset is massive. Here's the problem. When somebody attacks your identity and says, look, you've got a flaw in your identity, and you are a type of person who's not willing to change, well, now everything you are as a whole is flawed. That's a, Nobody's going to accept that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nobody's going to accept that. That's why as, as a culture, as a, as, a, as a person, if you genuinely care about somebody and you want them to change, you, know, you have to take extreme ownership from your communication. And, yeah. you know, it's like not it's not what you say, it's what response did you get. And you have to adjust your communication oh, to get the response that you want. I better be up at night sometimes. Just be like, I'm like, oh, I could have yeah, said this. Why did I not communicate that better? And I, I literally said before we started, podcast it's so hard to articulate yourself yeah because there's two things happening there's what you say and then what the person hears and it's like and if you can't gauge what you think they're going to hear properly it's like you end up offending people and hurting people and putting people off um, which especially with such a sensitive topic 
like fat loss Dying and, weight, and yeah, obesity. Because yeah. yeah. for me, it's like we, we, we really underestimate how, like, say your dad has a couple extra pounds, but he's actually clinically obese. It's mm-hmm. like you don't like it. If you can see somebody and they're like they're quite big, it's like they're medically morbidly obese. It's like if you're carrying you know, or at least obese. No, morbidly obese. I'm saying like you're like the, these people. Like you don't actually actually have to look really fat under t- today's standards to be like literally morbidly obese. It's like some people think yeah. they're overweight, and then like we show them their BMI, and it's like you're actually obese. And like, but, but, but these BMI, people, BMI is a bit. Yeah, of course. But listen, I'm not these people on bodybuilding. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, no, true, true. Giant, giant quads and biceps and all that. You know what I mean? So it's like, but like there, there is it. There, there we're, not, we're not built to carry a huge amount of weight. So if you're carrying two stone, you're probably obese. Even though you probably still have good in clothes, mm. you might still be a, you know a size twelve or a 34, 36 waist. It's like, but you're still probably you're probably obese. You, like go look it up now. I guarantee you, if you're carrying a couple extra stone. You know, and even even your skinny friend could probably lose a stone to be shredded. Mm. So it's like, but the, I think that comes to the question of like, what's your standard? Brian said that to me before. Like, it, what, what do you think of standards? Like, when you set a standard for yourself, it's it's really easy to, um, and you decide. Like you were saying that as well. Decisions. So, decisions so, really so you, here's what I think: is like when you set a standard, is like you can set a standard, and then you get people who are anorexic because they set the standard to on like a, 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 a not a great standard. So what you have to do is you have to figure out what your principles are. What your values are and then base your standards around that you know so because yeah. it, it can't it can't just be get shredded at all costs yeah because then you could literally lose yeah. it you lose at yourself. all costs it's like there's a lot to lose yeah so and so the, so it's like you set your principles and your your values and then once you and that takes time that takes time because every time like i've literally had things that i thought were very true and then i came to to put that thing into practice and mine didn't work and i was like Oh, damn it. So it's either, it's either is there a problem with my core principles, my core values, or is it a, is it a case of why I just didn't follow through? Which is fine, you know. So, yeah. But it's like you need to have your values and your principles in place, set a healthy standard, and it's like well, that's your standard. And as I said, for some people, it's gaining ten pounds is too much. For other people, it's twenty pounds. For, for some people, it's a pound. Some people, it's a pound. So if you stand the skin, I gained a pound. Like, oh no, not me, but other people. It's like if you stand the skin and I've, I've gained a pound. It's like they literally won't eat until that pound is gone. It's like, like I would do that. I would do that if I was boxing. Yeah. Because then the standards change, then the standards set exactly. for me, which is cut weight, and I don't believe that's necessarily a healthy standard, but it's the standard that you have to you have to follow, and it's about seasonally looking at your standards. It's like, yeah. look, come summer holidays, it's probably a good idea to to up your higher standards. Yeah. You know, yeah. Because, yeah. Because, yeah, if you want to, and, that, and that's something that, that people the, the the seasons. It's like the seasons of life. It's like some sometimes you're gonna be ten pounds overweight, sometimes you might be shredded, sometimes you know, sometimes you you want to make the sacrifice. To look good at the beach. Other times you want to go out because it's Christmas time and enjoy. Yeah, and that, that's and so we have thing. we have this window of maybe and maybe it's, it could be like you know, a five to ten pound window. You know where you're yeah. kind of your weight kind of floats in between. You know, just, it's not saying you know I'm sixty six kilos every day of the year. I would say just in many ways. Listen, it's so great you're saying that. It's like so. What standard do you say? I would say set the edge of your standard regardless of season. Healthy. Yeah. So for women, I think that's uh, thirty to thirty-five percent. No, it's thirty. Percent. It's thirty percent. Thirty percent. Good. And then men, it's twenty percent. And as you age, yeah, as you age, that number goes yeah. up. But yeah. I would tend to think that that goes up because of inactivity as you get older. Yeah. I don't I would, think. I would, yeah, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would say it doesn't change at all. Yeah, I, would, I, would, I would say the standard for health is the same no matter what age you are. I'd say that that's people letting old people off. Saying, well, you're not going to be able to do that because you're tapping. So that it's like, no, actually, probably means... Yeah, they're attaching, they're attaching all these stores and what does it mean to get older? Yeah. It's yeah. Like, it, means, oh, it means you have to be less active. It means, you know, it's going to well, slow, you, your you, metabolism is going to slow down all this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, your metabolism is because your, your muscles are atrophied because you're not maintaining an extra or whatever. But again, as like hormonally and all that jazz, as you get older, your hormone profile does change and then you will atrophy and all that jazz without with yeah, activity yeah. and all that jazz. Unless you're old and you take some of that testosterone. TRT. TRT. But that doesn't mean necessarily you have to gain weight. It just means that your approach to diet and exercise has to change. So it means yeah. that maybe your, your, your overall movement has to go up or your calories have to come down. Yeah. And that is a good point in terms of standards. So it's kind of resonated with me. It was um, I think it was a Tony Robbins story. He says that you know if you if say your 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 family um, and say you make say ten thousand euro a year just for, for simple numbers making ten thousand euros a year everybody's working all of a sudden and that's as much as you can make you're busting your balls you're doing whatever you can all of a sudden your partner gets sick they can't work anymore you know what I mean now your standard increases now all of a sudden you raise your standard now you're making twelve thirteen fourteen thousand a year even though before you were tapped out. You know what I mean? Now your standard has changed. Your reasons, your whys has changed. Now you set a new standard for yourself. Yeah, that's actually, that's very important in terms of the mindset. Like you need to understand your why. And it's really, it's really hard for people to do because they don't want to, 
You want to leave it big and foggy because then it's easy to not fail. Mm. Um, well, a big, sorry, big thing just for me is like, I actually didn't know how to set away. Yeah. You know, I think you just even saying that's very important. It's like, it's like, okay, there's the vagary thing because, you know, and some people are doing that, like, I don't know why, but some people don't know why. Well, here, no, here's a cool, here's some a really people cool. don't know why, some people don't know what the values are, some people don't know what the goals are, and it's like, people are just lost, it seems. They, here's a really cool thing. Like, see, um, back in the day, like, we used to have, re like, soldiers would have reasons for going out to battle. So it be because of their wife, I'm doing yeah. this for my family and for the sons and the daughters of whatever yeah. city you're fighting for. And, and see when things get hard and things get tough, all the, what they do is they just reinstate their wife. Yeah. Like, it's literally, it's a crutch yeah. at the line. It's like, I'm doing this because of, we're doing it for these yeah, guys, we're doing yeah, yeah. it for this. It's like, and even like we're doing it for these, it's like having a mantra. That's what positive yeah. self-talk is. It's like, you know, we have, again, a mission statement. You know, a mission yeah. statement on the wall. Fighting for this community, there's a happy, healthy lifestyle with passion and positivity. We encourage each other to set extraordinary goals and we motivate each other to achieve them. So it's like, when we're sitting down and we're maybe trying to make a business decision, it's like, is that in line with our mission statement? It's like, it's a compass. It helps you, it just helps you make better decisions. Mm -hmm. Is this in line with my wise? I, I'm like, you know, should I have this takeaway tonight? Is it okay for me to gain 20 pounds? It's like, no, I want to be happy and I want to be happy, happy and be a good role model for my children. So, you know, if you, as long as you have that compass to, to lead you and guide you and ask, is it going to move me in that direction? Yeah, but the, the number one thing with your why is that you believe it. Because mm -hmm. if you don't believe it and you're just saying it, like a lot of times when we're walking through this with, with clients and stuff like that there, they sort of give you the answer that they think you want to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they give you that answer. Or, or, anyway, or maybe a lot of cases, they give you the answer that makes them look good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, well, that's, yeah. It's, it's not true. It's like, if you want to lose weight because you want to get more girls, that's See cool. It. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Oh, but you you know, know, you've got to I've got so many women, right? And particularly women, because men, for the most part, have no problem saying it's for sex appeal. Yeah. So many women just say, like, look, I want to lose body fat, but it's not to look good or anything. It's like, why are you saying yeah, that? Why, like, why do you not do it to look good if... you not vain. I don't care yes, about it. Yeah. Don't fucking worry about it. It's like, for yourself, to find a, a, your own um, image of, 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 of worth and happiness. and But chase that. It's like, yeah. look good in yourself. Because it, because, it, because it feels extremely good to look at yourself naked and smile. Versus mm -hmm. grimace, mm -hmm. which is what most people tend to do. You know what I mean? When you're standing there and you're lean, you're shredded, you're loving yourself, fucking tensing up, you're like, yeah, I'm fucking I'm a boss. And then, but then you have but to base that, you have to base that off a realistic standard as well. And then realistic then becomes like, well, some people have it, so it's like, okay, it's realistic for them. It's like, look at where you are, look at what you've been through, what your history, what your diet, what yeah. are you going to sacrifice, what are you What's not going to sacrifice. So yeah, so it's kind of like, right, okay, so maybe for you as a forty-year-old housewife and never exercise before, fitting into a size ten would be that, and that would make you look in your clothes. Maybe you're not going to feel absolutely fantastic about yourself naked if you compare yourself to a Victoria's Secret model. Yeah. But at the same time, you could look better on a spectrum than you do feel about yourself right now. Mm -hmm. And it's that, it's that, it's that sadness that people get that they genuinely don't like how they look, and are so afraid to admit that to themselves, or they feel bad because there's this whole culture about, oh, what about the plus model? It's like, okay, well, that's fair enough. But as we just said, it's like, are they healthy? It's like, I would prefer to set a standard of health and then judge that against kind of like, it's like, oh, well, you should be allowed to do and be and feel however you want to feel. It's like, as long, as, it's, as, long as it's healthy, is that a thing? No, but, but no, 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 as long as you're being true to yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I remember seeing this girl, I can't remember, I think her name is Tess something. She's one of these plus size models. It's like, cool, it's like, cool, it's like, do you? It's like, if you, if you feel getting more confident in your love in your life, it's like, listen, cool, it's like, who might have tell you how to live your life? Yeah, and that's one thing I love about, about, yeah, okay, about being free. It's like, yeah. you know, live your life whatever you want. If, yeah, you, if, if you, you want to if you decision, you understand that yeah. if you eat that way and you live that kind of lifestyle, it's probably going to take five years. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so, so for talk's sake. But it's like, so make your own decision. If you, you, if you talk to me. But sorry, but talk. Just, just, just to finish that point, it's just, but it's like, once she started to lose the weight, she eventually came to the point where she was like, actually, you know what it is? I actually don't want to lose weight. I was like, all of a sudden, her followers or whatever, like, were fucking going mad. You know, calling her all these names, you know, with all these negative comments, all the stuff, us. because she, you betrayed us, that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because she wanted to, to yeah, lose I don't know, because I've been overweight before, and I just know, like, in my heart, it's like, you don't, like, I don't, I wouldn't, I could, don't even see how I could be as happy as I am when I'm in shape, when I'm not in shape. It just, I'm like, but it's like the spillover of it. It's like the, how it affects everything else. You know, when I was overweight, you know, I had no confidence, kept dropping out of school, you know, could my values weren't aligned. All you couldn't rely on yourself. I couldn't. It was a constant reminder that you couldn't rely on yourself exactly. because you lived away from the ideal that and you had. What, exactly, because you're you fall in line with your ideal already. But it's like my self confidence was low because I knew I couldn't trust myself because I kept fucking letting myself down. I couldn't follow through with my diet. I couldn't follow through with my exercise program. I couldn't follow then that late then it's like I couldn't follow through with college. I couldn't follow through with all these other things. Life goals, all that kind of stuff. And then once I lost the weight, it's like everything opened up. 
you know, when I started to give myself confidence, like, you really a higher standard of living. Exactly. Yeah, because the way you do anything is the way you do everything. The way you do your diet in your gym is probably the way you do your career. The way you do your career is probably the same way you do your relationships. The same way you do your relationship is the same way you treat your your, your, your friends and family. Or, you know, it's like it's all connected. Mm -hmm. You know, because because of these standards that we have. Sorry, just on that, it's kind of like exactly you said. Just kind of a fun analogy of life is like if you've got a Ferrari. And you don't ever want to get an oil maintenance, and you want to burn that bitch right to the ground. You just want, for you want to ride it off the rails because it's just way funner. You don't have the time for maintenance. So you talk to a mechanic, he'll tell you exactly how to look after that thing and where you go wrong. But at the end of the day, it's your Ferrari. Yeah. You know, it's really, and there is things for optimal health, and there is things for optimal maintenance of your body and how to look after yourself. But at the end of the day, do whatever you want, but understand that you know everything comes at a cost. Yeah, so true. Yeah, and just to finish up these points, we want to go wrap up in the next five minutes. Um, so again, yeah, so a couple of the key points. What is good nutrition? So controlling energy balance, touch on that. It's going to give us nutrients, mm -hmm. again, which, which is so, so important. And part, part of the reason why I think vegans feel so good and vegetarians feel so good to do is the massive influx of nutrients that they get from eating all these raw yeah. vegetables and cooked vegetables yeah. and all that jazz. Yeah. Yeah. Less process. Yeah. Less process. Yeah. 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 But again, but it exactly. It depends what kind of vegan. Are you getting a pizza and chip vegan or are you yeah. uh, a salad vegan or whatever the yeah. between yeah. Um, so it helps again helps you look, feel, and perform our best. Whatever again, whatever according to your own definition. What is your de like? What what is good performance to you? What is how do you want to look? Um, it's outcome based. So again, ask that question. How is it working for you? Because you know we see people all the time. Again, we talked about it before. It was like, I eat healthy. It's like why are you not losing weight? It's like oh, how's your diet? Oh, I eat, I eat very I eat that healthy. But it's like you know we put you in the scales. Well, you know, you're you're forty percent body fat. You know you're probably two three stone overweight here. You get the definition of healthy is. Exactly, oh, yeah. it's, it's a sentiment, exactly. Because that, that's actually one thing I see when I ask guys, oh, how's the diet going? It's like, oh, it's going good. It's like, what's good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight what's good? And then, and then what do you mean by good? The other side of it is I had a, another fella who, who did a diet, I'm not in his, but he basically had a diet, he lost her ligaments, went away, took two, three stone, and then he left, and then went all back on. And so, yeah. so how'd that diet work? Eh, not necessarily the best, because yeah. yeah. we couldn't sustain it. But it, yeah, well, is that a mindset issue or a diet issue? I think it's, I think it's, I think it's, it's both. Mindset. I think it's both. Yeah. It's a habit, it's a habit issue, and, and it's a... Um, they, 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 don't, don't, they didn't want it. They, they didn't find the foods that they like to eat normally, and they didn't have the habit of doing that. So, like, yeah. imagine if you have a breakfast that you love every single day. You know what the portions of it are. You know how many calories are in it, and you like it. And you look forward to it. But then you have that, and then you're not. You're like, oh, happy days. And then your lunch is something you also like, but it's also healthy, and it's also within the range to where you're going. You're like, oh, I can't wait to lunch. You have your lunch, and then it's like dinner's the same. It's like, oh, I have this dinner. I like, it's like a lot of people are saying, it's like, oh, I don't mind it. It's all right. Does the job. You know, it's like, so we'll make it something that you yeah. like. Whereas if you're doing say like a, a six, eight, ten, twelve week program, it's like you can't wait till that program's over because it's like it's such a sacrifice for you, you know. Exactly. And chicken and broccoli is so difficult for you that you just can't wait to get out of it, eat Domino's or whatever, whatever you want to eat. And um, next one, sustainable for both us and the planet. Anything on that? What is it? Anything just to touch on that? Well, just uh, as I said, but the kind of whole veganism displacement of animals is kind of well, there's a downfall of that. It's like maybe might yeah. otherwise been a lot because like oh well, you know. There's an element of virtue not killing things, and then there's other things like okay, well, you know, you have to. But it's much more sensitive. Like what things are you killing? Yeah, it's like yeah, something yeah. has to die. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's happens all that. Like that's what my like, that's what my Mike and Loki goal is. So it, well, but we know what it's not. We know what it's not, and that's mm -hmm. a good place to start from. Which is like it's not factory battery farm hens. Yeah. It's yeah. not factory farm and all these different. Like, sort like of because you can make the same argument in order to set up that factory, you have to replace just many animals in exactly. space around it. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it's a thing. It's like these these issues aren't black and white. These are very complex, complicated issues that. A lot of people just don't really fully understand the complexity of it, yeah. which is kind of how dogma and stuff uh, takes place. Um, next one, removing limiting factors, I think, would be an interesting one. So understanding what your limiting factor, factors are and factor them into the plan that you're realizing. We do a whole, yeah, we'll do a whole podcast, and we, no, we do like 20 bloody podcasts on the factors. I think you should do sure. multiple ones on loads of different factors. Yeah. Like, so give me, give me, say, a top three limiting factors. A top three, um, food and medical quality. Would be would be number one. Your mindset is absolutely massive, and then um, obviously then there's sleep and recovery. There's all, all these different sort of limiting factors. Like um, hydration could be one, exercise. exercise is one. Like there's all these different ones, and it's like habits can be one as well. Your environment can be one. Your social support can be one, and you can you can work on each one of these individually. So like uh, pick one that you want to start with. Like if you pick one, like oh I have to sort out my nutrition and all that jazz first. It's like if that seems like a big mountain for you to climb, maybe you should be like oh just. Start telling your friends and your family and ask them to support you in your endeavor. Yeah. Like, that's and one of the factors. What we talk about is these social contracts. Exactly. Or, like you were saying earlier, like, get rid of all the stuff in your fridge, you're setting up your environment. So, like, it, uh, um, there's this thing, it was like, from this book, it was like John Berardi, I think his name is. And he's. Berardi, I think. Berardi. Well, um, one of his things, his first thought was that if you have something uh, in your house that um, 
if you have something in your house to eat, it's like either you, someone you love, or someone you mildly tolerate is going to consume it. So try and make sure that it's good. Yeah. yeah. You know, like if it's in your house, someone's going to eat yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. Um, on oh. top of that, you want to reduce resistance. Unless, unless it's one of them just sits in the press. That's what I was going to say. You're going to throw it out when you're moving in. Nobody ate those grapes. <laughs> but here's the thing. It's like if they're up in the press and the door's closed, do you know what I mean? And they're on the top shelf. It's like the amount of steps you have to do to get that yeah. versus, let's say, bars that are sitting open on the table. Yeah. You know, you're going like this and open it up or going, oh, it's up and go over there. Like those little bits of resistance actually matter. And yeah. if you have like your fruit and all that jazz sitting out in front of you, like where you can see it, that is massive. If you put the stuff that yeah. you don't want to be eating all the time, put that away, and so you can't see, like out of sight, your yeah. mind is a big deal. In no, the, the, it's a big thing. Like you're sitting there chilling, say on a Saturday night, ready to watch your, your movie or whatever. It's a big. It's a big thing having to go to the shop to get your biscuits or whatever yeah. versus having to go into the kitchen to get. The your amount biscuits. of times that I was glad I didn't have lunch in my house when I was going home from work is like, yeah. like thank God because I would have been yeah. like mad. Yeah, because because you're probably this a stress of beer, you're tired or whatever. And it's like yeah, but then after like twenty minutes when you're home and that that little signal has passed and you go to bed, wherever it's like oh I didn't need it at all. Because what that's called is it's getting it's one of the most effective uh, ways to to change change patterns, but also to overcome addiction. It's called surfing the urge. If you wait, if you have that urge, surf wait, the urge. Surf the urge, wait 10, 15, But I'm saying like this. And that's this, what fast and really good for doing. Yeah, well. but but this 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 technique is so simple, but it's actually literally help people like you know as um and then like a hardest place is like you know heroin addicts surfing the urge. Something is a simple idea, but that's something we talked about. But what I was talking to other people this a couple of months back, it's like the simplest ideas. Or the most easily discarded. You mm. know what I'm saying? It's like because we were talking about like stress management and those kind of talking about breath, breathing. It's like it's so simple. Just well, breathe. It's too easy. It's too easy. You you, we want a more complex, mm. more complex answer. I thought it's easy to just need breathing that breath and really reduce stress by it. Yeah, 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 yeah. This mask you can put on, it, you know, it's connected to an app and blah, blah, blah. And I, I think that's kind of the consumption mentality of Western society. Yeah. Right. But also, we, we seem to have some sort of, I know I have anyway, some sort of. Attraction to technology and this kind of stuff. I think mm. it's, it's more, maybe it's more of a male thing. I don't know. Um, and again, we talked we talk about mindsets already because yeah, there's no need to really go into that. And then you touched on on the environment. So just making sure that your mind is set up for success. Take away the take away the temptation. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like you're not. We, we all know we're not perfect people. So like make it easy for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Burn like, the boats. Burn the boats. You know, get rid of it. It's like generally, if you want to take one action today for this podcast, you're generally serious about changing the way you eat. It's like don't have the temptation in the house. Make it as difficult as possible for you. What would you do? Time. What would you say to someone who um, who has kids and has friends and all that jazz who are living with them who have all this other stuff as well? That's not what I don't understand. I don't understand why it needs to be a necessity for children. I don't understand mm. why, oh, why children are the. So I don't understand so why so children so are so getting so a free card. It's like, oh, it's like so when like people say, I have to cook two or three dinners. It's like, why? Why what, is the food you're not eating not good enough? Is the food you're eating on your diet? Not good enough for your children as well because it should be. I don't like it. Yeah, so 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 you the stress of having to convince them to eat it. But there was a cool. I seen this comedian. I think it was a, um, oh something Russell or something right there. He used to be on Channel Four or something. But he, he posted a video basically saying how um, how like if it, it, new families, new things in this sort of current age, it's like they oh I only eat tarragon. Like, we won't eat anything else. It's like back when he was a kid, he used to. He's like oh it's your chicken and broccoli. And it's like have that feeling. It's like oh no thanks, I'm not hungry tonight. I don't really want to eat that. It's like, all right, there you go. And the next day, chicken and broccoli. Oh, I'm not really hungry. Is there anything else? It's like, nope. All right, okay, there you go. Yeah. The third day, it's like, they're going to probably eat it. It's like, they, if you go to Africa and you see the starving children, it's like, and you give them, let's say, goat and rice or whatever it is, they're not going to be like, oh, no, he only eats Harry Bowl. Yeah, yeah. He, doesn't, he doesn't like vegetables. Yeah, yeah. You know and I'm sure so many people don't scream at their phones or whatever. And I was like, yeah, well, you have kids. Yeah. And listen, yeah. Oh, time will tell. Yeah. Him, but. You know, until until then, I think like this fucking set higher standards for the kids. Is like kids should be eating healthy too. Yeah, there was a, so there was a, there was somebody on, on the Joe Rogan podcast, and as soon as he said it, I was like, that is obvious. It's like my kids don't eat from the kid menu at a restaurant. So it's like it's cheaper, at, at a smaller portion, but they are not give similar foods to the adult portion. They have filet mignon with side salad and garlic bread with cheese on top yeah. or whatever it is like kids menu. Fish and chips. chips, fish and chips, nuggets and chips. Like, yeah, what, the, yeah, yeah. what is that? Yeah, true. What's that? Was well, because kids are picky eaters. They they have a, they have a, a very high annoyance rate when they're they're agitated and not getting what they want. It's kind of like, look, so do you. As we talked about, it's like we're all we're all little children. When you go tell yourself to go on a diet, you don't necessarily go on a diet. It's like, look, if you haven't mastered yourself, it's going to be very hard to master it with your children because you've got no experience in mastering the psychology of um, of of moderation. Yeah. 
Yeah, again, not very interesting topic. Again, maybe we could get some of our, some romans in for podcasting and maybe see what has worked and what hasn't worked for them. Could be very interesting, very interesting listen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, thanks for having you guys. Good to kind of finally get back and get another podcast. Good to have you back. Yeah, yeah, so if anybody has any questions, you know, feel free to leave comments, send us messages. We're literally here to help help as many people as we possibly can. And you've got any, particularly if you've got any suggestions for our podcast, um, you know, stuff that you're genuinely interested in, you've written, you genuinely know, we'll do some research, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to, to, to educate and, and, and help you. Um, so thanks for listening guys thank Chris and Ryan for, for, for joining me today um, thanks Alan don't forget to follow me on Instagram FF Movie FF Movie Coach formerly FF Frank Phil and Scotty Chris is FF Chris M and I am a fighting double on the score fit um, that's a wrap guys see you in the next one thanks so much bye